Hello, everyone. My name is Ann Frost, and I'm here with Mary Barbara Hanna. And together, we're the Frost Advisory. <laughs> we're so pleased to be with you today talking about building successful teams by using help seeking behaviors. We've got just a short amount of time together, but we fill this video with lots of important information. So be sure to listen for the one thing that will be your takeaway from today's conversation. Let's start with a little reflection. How many of you have ever had the experience of being led by someone who requires total command and control over your team? In this situation, I'm wondering how did it make you feel? Like you were just a number, invisible, uncertain about how and where you fit, that the leader was more focused on himself and his status and achievement instead of your team members and what your needs are. If you answered yes to any part of this question, most likely you've been working under a more traditional authoritarian leader. Now think about another more positive experience you've had where your leader was, or hopefully is, someone who inspires and equips your team for success. Thinks of your team members as resources who make valuable contributions to the organization's success. Exemplifies behaviors that builds trust, shows his vulnerability, and promotes your development and engagement. This, my friends, is a servant leader. And I'd like to talk a little bit about the principles of servant leadership. And this servant leadership is really a set of practices that when used in a sincere, authentic way, will enrich the lives of individuals, build better organizations, and ultimately create a more just and caring world. First, we have listening, then healing, awareness, empathy, foresight, conceptualization, persuasion, stewardship, commitment to the growth of people, and building community. One of the primary methods a servant leader uses to build a high-performing team is seeking input and help from their team in order to achieve the best outcomes. After all, the people doing the work are often the most knowledgeable about what the real issues and needs are for a particular task, project, or situation. And asking for help doesn't make you weak, quite the opposite. This kind of vulnerability makes you more approachable, authentic, and perhaps most importantly, elevates the level of trust you have among your team members. Obviously, we can't cover all 10 of these principles, so we're going to highlight the two most important principles for you to consider as you begin to build your team. First, foresight, or the ability to see what will be needed in the future. This is not done in a vacuum. Foresight requires the input of team members who are experts in their particular fields and see the future through those filters. For example, the cliche is true, change happens. So how do we manage change and minimize the resistance that so often accompanies it? How do we take advantage of the change so that we actually become stronger as a result? We look to our team. After all, they are the ones who are often more directly impacted by the change, right? Tapping into their areas of expertise, involving them in the conversation, in short, asking them for help with problem solving and decision making has proven to be the best way to keep your team focused, energized, and engaged, not only today, but tomorrow and beyond. And second, conceptualization which means creating that future through vision and mission. Team members are critical in this phase as they know and understand what the vision and mission require from their own departments. For example, in order to set the mission of a department and organization, a servant leader calls her team together and together they craft a relevant and meaningful mission statement. The result? Because the servant leader has invited their input, there is energy around the table, a willingness to implement whatever changes and actions may be required, more ownership of responsibilities, and the mutual understanding that everyone will be held to the same standard of accountability. And if they need help, they'll know it's okay to come to you. They'll feel free and safe to ask because you have modeled that same behavior toward them. 
So implementing servant leadership principles is going to take a little time and effort on your part. It will not happen overnight, but once you start seeing progress, it'll be easier to build on that process. So think of how the investment of time and energy practicing servant leadership might impact your organization, kind of the payoff for your investment of time and energy. When you display servant leadership principles, particularly those help-seeking behaviors, you might see results in such things as higher levels of trust, engagement, and as Mary Barbara mentioned, task ownership, which lead to an increase in job satisfaction, and all of which leads to greater staff and volunteer retention. In other words, if you take care of the people doing the work, the odds of building a thriving community within the organization will increase exponentially. As a result of that strong inside community, there will be a positive impact on the outside community, the people you serve. So as we bring this session to a close, remember rarely will people follow blindly. They want to know where they're going and how they're gonna get there. And you can answer these two questions with foresight and conceptualization. With that in mind, take a moment and make a note of one or two of the servant leadership principles you'll be able to start using tomorrow as you build your high performing team. And in our next session, we'll talk about the principles of active listening, awareness and stewardship in the context of staff management. So in the meantime, Thank you for your attention and we'll look forward to the next time we're together.